If you could just tell me what you thought of the Israeli Prime Minister's speech to Congress just now. I didn't go, I decided not to go. And I just cannot understand and cannot believe in such a critical moment that Netanyahu is here and not home. If you're ever tempted to conflate the ridiculous wreckers from the pro-peace pro protests surrounding Benjamin Netanyahu's address of a joint session of Congress. Just keep in mind that you might be conflating those folks with Aviva Siegel. She was actually held hostage in Gaza. She was held hostage for 51 days and tragically her husband Keith is still held captive in Gaza. Yet she along with other family members of hostages have been protesting Benjamin Netanyahu and his speech before a joint session of Congress this week. Now during his speech Netanyahu slandered protesters, conflated all of them with violent protesters and said that they are funded by Iran without providing a shred of evidence and even called them useful idiots. He called American citizens useful idiots on American soil as a foreign leader of a foreign country. Just let that sink in for a second. Now many of the protesters were Jewish and many of them have been victimized by Hamas directly. They are not Hamas supporters at all, but they certainly are not supportive of Benjamin Netanyahu because they see exactly what he's doing. They see that this isn't about protecting Israelis, it's not about freeing hostages, it's about making this war last as long as humanly possible so he can remain in power. And according to the Times of Israel reporter Jacob Majid, some of the relatives of these hostages actually walked out of Netanyahu's address to Congress. The PM or Prime Minister goes on to pledge not to rest until the hostages are home, leading the vast majority in the room to stand and applaud, save for roughly a dozen or so hostage families. Which by the way, Netanyahu also attempted to use as pawns during his speech and they weren't having it. Now reporters revealed that other family members were removed from the chamber after they unveiled yellow t-shirts with the words, seal the deal now. So I wanna show you one example. Here's one of the women who ended up getting arrested. She's wearing the t-shirt. I mean, it's obviously a peaceful protest. It's just that they were wearing the shirt and the shirt offended the sensitivities of the members of Congress who are bought and paid for by the pro-Israel lobby. Let's just keep it real. So six, six individuals were arrested, Israelis who have been victimized by Hamas. Arrested by Capitol Police. Yeah, and so when we say pro-Israel, by the way, it, we're talking about the government of, of Israel now, right? So the if you're not for the right-wing government who wants to wage perpetual war, and that's part of the reason they're not getting the hostages back, um, you know, you get arrested. Even if you're Israeli, even if you're uh, Israeli and American, even if you're uh, have family members who are hostages, it doesn't matter. You don't agree with Netanyahu and AIPAC, you will be removed from the building. Hey, don't scroll away, come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just wanna urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting, you do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. Who's making the decision? So, so like, what if you're pro-Israel but you're incredibly left-wing? What if you're moderate in pro-Israel? No, none of you matter. The only thing that matters is the source of the funding of those politicians, and that's APAC. And APAC in the past at least pretended to be nonpartisan. Now they're fully pro Netanyahu, massively right wing. And so if you don't agree with like the most extreme right wingers in Israel, you'll be eliminated. And even if you're a hostage family member, you're gonna get arrested at the speech where they're pretending to care about you. I mean, the image of Netanyahu lying about the peace deal and the entire US Congress giving him a standing ovation while the hostage families are being arrested off camera mm -hmm. at the same speech. Yep. That right there is the current state of America. And I, I wanna I wanna honor yeah. these brave individuals who were arrested by our Capitol Police. The guests arrested were Michael Levy, Karmit, Palti, Katzir, Gil Dickman, Liet Rubin, Unger, Alan Gott. Zahiro Shahar Moore, those were the individuals who were arrested according to the Capitol Police. And so again, I just really want to emphasize that there is an effort right now to slander, to smear peaceful individuals like the ones that we're talking about right now. 
by conflating them with individuals who engage in vandalism, rioting, and honestly behavior that I do not in any way support. I think that those people are wreckers, the individuals who you know vandalize the Liberty Bell. Look, I don't know who they are, and there's all these like theories flying around. Oh, they're provocateurs. Oh, it's it's Mossad. It's a psyop. I don't know. I have no evidence of that. What I do know is that these people are wreckers, and they're more self-interested in regard to their emotional release because they're destroying an important message that peace-loving individuals are trying to put out there as a part of their protest, and it disgusts me. And what also disgusts me is that. These wreckers create a situation in which someone like Benjamin Netanyahu can come on American soil and slander American people, American citizens, and some in this country who are Americans themselves think he's justified in doing that. Yeah. That disgusts me beyond words, Cenk. Yeah. Well, most of the people who think that are bought and paid for by APAC. Okay, go live in Israel then. Yeah. Go live in Israel. If you don't appreciate this country, if Israel's more important to you than America is, go live in go live in Israel. What's the yeah. problem? And as I said yesterday, remember this is why we love America, Sarah Jacobs, Bernie Sanders, Jerry Nadler, and many others, Jewish American representatives, along with Muslim American representatives, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, all boycotted the speech and said- Rashida this is Tlaib not- was there, she did not boycott it. She held up a sign that said war criminal. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's just a different form of protest, right? right? And so, but they were united, whether they're Jewish Americans or Muslim Americans, because they're Americans. And they're like, this Netanyahu is not helping Israel, he's not helping America. He's not helping anyone but APAC and APAC's funding all these. So look, they didn't get into APAC too much other than Rashida has talked about it in the past, right? But but bottom line is they all did the right thing because they care about America. So now look, two huge things out of this. I will first, number one, I wanna talk about what Anna just talked about. So spray painting Hamas on a statue in, in uh, the Capitol or burning the American flag. Look, I, I don't have any evidence in any direction, so I don't want you to take this as, oh, there's we know something that, uh, that we're not telling you, okay? Up, so that's why I'm gonna frame it this way. If that was not a Mossad PSYOP operation, they had to be sitting at headquarters going, how did we get this lucky? Seriously. Like, oh my God, Seriously. this is perfect. So if you're a knucklehead out there and you did this and you thought you were helping Palestinians, you could not have helped Netanyahu and Mossad and the IDF more I've than this. Because American people are already on your side. The majority, overwhelming majority want a ceasefire and they want the hostages back. And, and now a, a majority of Americans saying, wait, why are we funding Israel? And that is an enormous turn of events. So Palestinians, I know it doesn't look like it, and I know you're not seeing it at all. But at least we've turned to American people. Turning American politicians is much harder, okay? But so now, right as we're doing that, you're gonna burn all the goodwill and you're gonna squander it by burning the American flag and, and spray painting Hamas. Yeah, because they're wreckers, they're wreckers, that's all they are. The, yeah. All they like to do is exploit any movement to release their emotional issues onto everyone else. That's yeah. all it is, that's all it is. They riot, they loot, that's what they do, okay? They they vandalize property and then they feel real good about themselves. They think they're revolutionaries, when in reality they destroy every movement, every righteous movement in this country. I, they're I, the I, worst people in the country, uh, okay? I, I don't care, I'm not holding back, they are the worst. They drown out the righteous message of the peaceful protesters. They did it yesterday, they'll do it again. That's who they are, they're wreckers. So whoever they are, whichever side they were on. I mean, if they were on the side of Netanyahu and IDF, well played, okay? If they were on the, they thought they were on the Palestinian side, you've done more damage than you could possibly know. Please stop being like counterproductive. What you're doing is you're hurting Palestinians and the ability to end this war. Okay, by and, the way, and by the way, the reason why they couldn't have helped Netanyahu more is because mainstream media is waiting to blame Palestinians. Hundred percent. So and what, Iran. And and so what they they did, mainstream media barely talked about the hostage family members getting arrested yesterday. They did almost no fact check of Netanyahu and his outrageous lies, which I'm going to get to in a second. 
And instead, on a loop, 24 seven, Hamas burning the flag, Hamas burning the flag. And it was on with Alan Dershowitz on News Nation. Two thirds of the screen was taken up by a constant B roll of burning the flag, Hamas burning the flag, Hamas. So don't help the propaganda that mainstream media already wants to do by doing stupid counterproductive Jake, they stuff. They don't care, they don't care. They don't, they don't care what you have to say, they don't care about strategy, they don't care about the cause, all they care about is themselves. Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, when some of the student protests were happening, I'm forgetting the name. He's the professor who's Jewish and he's been very vociferous against the occupation of Palestinians. He went to go speak to the student protesters. I'm sorry, his name is slipping my mind at the moment. But he was telling them, look, you gotta be strategic with your messaging. And a lot of people here from the river to the sea, and they take something very nefarious out of that statement. So. Try to not say that statement, don't chant that, because you don't want that to take away from the important message that you're trying to put out there through this protest. Now, clearly, not every protester engaged in this, but immediately after he said that, they start chanting from the river to the sea because they don't care. They don't care. They don't care about the strategy. They don't care about ensuring that their protest doesn't get, you know, slandered all over the press because of a few bad apples. It's yeah. just, it's so frustrating, it's so incredibly frustrating. But anyway, done with them, let's actually move on to individuals who deserve a platform, who should be heard from, including Jonathan Dekel Chen. He's the father of a hostage who went on MSNBC to share his views of Netanyahu. Let's watch. First and foremost, why is it that he is delaying signing this agreement when the entire Israeli defense establishment, intelligence community and his own defense minister have already said publicly that all of the conditions are ripe to sign right now and any additional delay simply risks the lives of the hostages and does not enhance Israel's security situation. That's question number one that was not answered on Monday evening. The second question is, as a member of Kibbutz near Oz that was destroyed, why is it that nearly 10 months after our kibbutz was destroyed, 50 of our members were murdered, 35 of the 120 hostages are from near Oz. Why is it that he has not come to visit the kibbutz or the surviving uh, the surviving remnant community of the kibbutz? Just something that I think in, you know, in any normal country would be unthinkable. And thirdly, he was quoted recently uh, as saying that hostages aren't dying in captivity. Um, he did not answer that question directly during our time together. And I would like to know what sense that makes, given that from our kibbutz alone, seven, seven hostages have died since October 8th. So I just want to understand from the individuals who are labeling all of the protesters Hamas sympathizers. Do you want to look that man in the eye and call him a Hamas sympathizer because he's protesting Netanyahu? I'm curious. Dershowitz, you disgusting pervert. Are you gonna answer that question? Yeah, so I wanna get to that. So, I want, and I also want you to take note of these heroes who are Israelis. Yep. And trying to get, very understandable, you get the hostages back, it's their family members, etc. But also trying to do the right thing to the best of their abilities. And so, one of the people arrested yesterday at the Capitol was the hero Shahar Moore. And we interviewed him recently, so please check out that interview. He made. Of course, an emotional, compelling case right here on the Young Turks about it, and then and walked a walk in protest of Netanyahu's speech yesterday, and we appreciate him. So now I want to get to the point that this gentleman was making. Um, so Netanyahu lied, and so did Dershowitz in the appearance that Anna and and, and he did. And the, and if you see someone saying this, understand that they're doing propaganda and are lying to you on purpose. They keep saying that. Oh, Israel's already accepted the peace deal and the ceasefire deal. It's Hamas won't accept it. That is just not remotely true. In fact, as that gentleman just described, and uh, and you know you, you saw his vantage point, but it's just a matter of fact. Israeli defense officials and intelligence officials are saying to Netanyahu, "For God's sake, take the deal. We're, we this is our deal. There's nothing left to do." So there is no more military reason. The military has said, the Israeli military has said, we did the best we could. You can't, there is no more Hamas to get in a way that's realistic enough, right? That we should continue this war. And they want to sign the ceasefire. So 
There's not even like, even if you're hard right wing and you're like, ah, just kill all of Hamas and keep going into, but the Israeli military is saying, think we're done. There's nothing left to do. So there's one and only one reason why that ceasefire deal hasn't been signed. It's because the minute that it's signed, Netanyahu is going to lose the two right wing ministers and their party. And, and then he's gonna lose the majority in Knesset and they're gonna have to call an election. And Netanyahu is sitting at a 72% unpopularity in Israel and he will lose power. So he is delaying this war, killing thousands of more Palestinians, endangering Israeli lives, IDF soldiers, and not getting the hostages back on purpose when the almost entire Israeli infrastructure, let alone the entire world, is saying, sign the goddamn deal. But he won't do it because he's one of the greediest, most evil, most corrupt men I have ever known in my life. So he's dragging both the Palestinians, the Israelis, and by the way, also the Americans into more and more war strictly for his own political career. He's evil defined. Yeah, and uh, members of Congress, I mean, they might have like broken their like kneecaps by the amount of times that they like stood up and gave him like a, an insanely loud round of applause. But that's what we have in our in our political system, well, an I, insane level of corruption. As long as the check's clear, the politicians will clap like trained seals. And that's what we saw in Congress yesterday.